Hey, welcome back to another video. If you're trying to get a job in cloud computing, you've probably heard of cloud project. And you're probably wondering, how can I get a cloud project? How can I do a cloud project that is both new and makes me stand out from everybody else? And in this video, I will give you three techniques, three things to think about that will make your projects new and stand out from everybody else. So let's go. All right, before we get started, Let's quickly talk about what makes a good cloud project. The first thing is it has to be useful. Think about it this way. If you deploy all the resources in Azure, what have you accomplished? Nothing. You have to have a purpose. You deployed it because you wanted to solve a problem. You deployed the infrastructure because you wanted to copy some infrastructure that already existed, or you wanted to try it or service or whatever. But it has to have a purpose. Number two, it has to be documented. You can't just deploy the resources and then call it a day. It's a portfolio project. You have to choose something. And because infrastructure costs money, especially if you don't use it, you have to find a way to document that you've done the work. So screenshots, blog posts, infrastructure as code is actually the best way because not only can you showcase that you've done the work, but somebody else can go look at what you've done and do the same thing that you did and you know deploy it in their own subscription and whatnot. And give it a go. And number three, it has to be fun. You have to enjoy yourself. If you do a cloud project just for the sake of doing a cloud project, it's not a great project. If you do a project because you want to have fun, because it's cool, because there's a challenge at the end, it's a much better cloud project because you will enjoy yourself doing it. And you can take it to the next level and really showcase what you can do. So let's talk about how you can make unique cloud projects. And the first thing is the coolest thing. Honestly, um, it's awesome. Look at preview features. If you look at preview features, you're guaranteed to have a project that nobody else has done because they're brand new. Nobody else has seen them. And so if you implement these features, uh, deploy them, document them, do a tutorial on how to use these features, you will be the first one to do that or one of the first ones to do that. So when you show up to an interview and you say, I've deployed this preview feature and this is how it works, nobody else has done that. So you can be the first one. You can have your unique cloud project. Not only that, companies haven't implemented these features and they may plan on implementing them. But here's the thing, companies cannot implement these features because of the service level agreement, SLA. That means that if these preview features fail or there's a data leak or whatever, the cloud provider is like, ah, not my problem, it's your problem. So they cannot in good conscience implement these features. So here's you showing up, implementing these features, giving them a go because you're not a company. And you can just be like, you know what, this feature, you know, the feature you want to implement, I've implemented it. I know how it works. If it comes out of preview mode, I am your person. I am the person who can implement these features like that. That gives you an edge over other people who have all done the same projects. You have done projects that they will want to do. So it is easier to picture you as a future employee than other candidates. So these are an unlimited source of project ideas. Go to Azure or AWS or Google Cloud, look at their preview features. I'm gonna put the links in the description below so you can go and check them out. That's gonna be a fun project. All right, the second thing you can do is go through enterprise architecture standards that these cloud providers provide to enterprises. So for example, the AWS Well Architected Framework, there's a tool that helps you deploy things, the Microsoft Azure Enterprise Scale Architecture. And these are enterprise architecture that follow a set of guidelines that enterprises have to follow. When you are able to implement these architecture, following these guidelines, you are able to implement enterprise level architecture, which is something that you usually don't do in projects. When you do in projects, it's really a amateur level type of thing, not a criticism, right? Nobody has the money to maintain an enterprise level project. 
Uh, these actually cost money. I'm not saying that you have to spend that money. You can always deploy things with infrastructure as code and delete them later. And that will cost you a lot less money. The advantage of that is that it shows that you're able to deploy enterprise level architecture and designs, and you are able to work in an enterprise environment, especially if you don't have any previous enterprise experience, having these really helps showcase that you're able to do the work. Not only that, it also showcases that you are able to take a set of requirements and implement them on your own without help. Now, one thing I would tell you that you should do, these architectures are not always completely thought through. They are a guideline, a general guideline, a basic framework, if you will. But we at work have implemented some of these guidelines, these designs, and we have found that doesn't really always work for us. And we've had to come up with solutions to the problems that arise when we implement these. And if you do that, you will really show the recruiter, the employer, the interviewer, whoever you, that you are able to look at a design, find the flaws, find future use cases where it would not apply, and design and implement a solution that uh, was not thought of by the company. We have so many of these use cases at work, not a criticism of Microsoft. You know, there's every company does things in a different way, and these are just general guidelines, but uh, it is a lot of time. And um, being able to find the design, find the flaws, and implement solution, because finding the flaws, anybody can do. Finding a solution, now that's a skill that people want to have. And lastly, do projects that you need. Think of all these web developer portfolio projects, you know, implement a clock, a sorting algorithm, whatever, but make your own tools that you need. You will find yourself finding a few tools and looking for solutions that you could potentially implement yourself and not have to pay nearly as much money or work even better than the solutions you could buy. Here's a few examples of the ones I've done for myself because I had a need that just ended up being cloud projects. VPN, I am using Azure VPN. That didn't really work out so great, but you know what? I did my own VPN. Subtitles for this video and that I use for editing, these are done through Azure Cognitive Services uh, speech to text um, tool. So this is a tool that I needed and I've created a project around that. I have a few calculators that I use for things like finances and things like that, that I've turned into tools that run on my website. Well, you won't see it because it's hidden, but I have them because I need them. Come up with tools that you want, that you want to use and just implement them. The good thing with that is you found a problem and you solved it. It's a great way of showing your problem solving skills. And if after this video, you're still wondering what can you do? What are projects you can do? I recommend this playlist. Uh, this is my projects playlist that talks about what are good projects, how you find projects, a few projects that you should do, a few projects that I have done that I've documenting, showcasing, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.